Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm building out a DIY expedition camper. And this has started entirely from scratch as you've probably been following along, building this whole entire camper out. And now we're moving on to the inside as this camper is getting built out. And that's in my big electrical system. That's three really big 300 amp hour batteries all wired together in three different pairs at 24 volts. And then of course we bring in dual alternator charging, one at 12 volts and one at 24 volts, and a 5,000 watt inverter. And of course, you know, dual 120 volt shore power connections and a 85 to 250 volt shore power connection to be able to have global charging anywhere in the world. And of course, four links Distributors to have the good DC distribution at 24 volts going everywhere and of course dual solar arrays and a whole section of heated flooring and air conditioning systems and all that wire together and today we're going to focus on is just simply wiring up the batteries to the shunt with these three different battery pairs and a remote battery switches for each one of these because we're going to dive into a little bit more in a subpart series here of the electrical system as we progress so thank you for watching and enjoy and as you've been following along in my video series you probably know i had to do a little battery tetris as although all the batteries are exactly the same Two of them are in one form factor and four in a different form factor that was unexpected, even though they're exactly the same specs and everything inside. But nonetheless, I had to do a little battery Tetris. And now, so now I have to do the same Tetris with my Lynx distributors and shunts. Even though I had it all planned out where they'd go and how they'd fit, now it's actually the layout to make sure that I am minimizing the length of the battery cables, both the positive and negative cables from each of these battery pairs and ensuring that they're all equal length as well with each other between each of the pairs. So they have equal charging and discharging as well as the least resistance and length and weight and cost of the cables. So got to do a little battery Tetris and start connecting up this Lynx distributor and then figuring out exactly where to put the RBS is the remote battery switches and the shunt to ensure that all these cable links between the pairs are exactly the same length. Ah, but wait, hang on just a moment here. Got to make sure that these four links distributors are all interconnected, all tightened up. Make sure that their bus bars are clean before we go ahead and go ahead and torque them down. And once they're all torqued down and gained together, is then go ahead and screw them or bolt them down to my mount. Tight. Now we just have to get this mounted. All right, so I know it's a little bit of a mess right now to see, but this is the Victron Energy Lynx distributors. I have four of them interconnected. That's the max amount you're allowed to interconnect. Each one provides four positive and negative DC connections. And each one I think can have a fuse up to, I think, 500 amps per connection. So that provides me with 16 DC connections, positive and negative, that I can connect in each be infused and each have an also ability to read that fuse remotely which is pretty rad so that's what i want going to have to do a little bit of a hack for this in order to do that without a victron links bms which i can't really fit in here not only that but because my batteries are spread out i don't want to have them all coming into one spot because that would lengthen the cables from the ones that are furthest away so it doesn't really work out well. And so this provides me a much more even distribution of both the power coming in for the batteries and also the power going out from the batteries. It'll equalize that nicely throughout the distribution bus. It's rated to 1,000 amps for the whole DC distribution bus. I have 900 amps of batteries at 24 volts. So I'm within that range. So this is a little bit. Let me just kind of walk through what I've got here. I have the links, all four of them interconnected right here. This is a amount that I just went ahead and quickly fabbed up from some remaining expanded PVC I had left over from my van build several years ago. This expanded PVC is really lightweight. It holds screws really well. It won't absorb water or moisture. It doesn't really thermally expand or contract. And I can easily just bridge these 8020 frames without having to add more 8020 frames so I can build this out much lighter, provide an attachment point for all these. With all the screws, four per one of these links going in, that's 16 screws going into this, more than adequate to hold this down. And so this is essentially how it's going to go. My inverter's right here. So granted, there's a whole lot of construction project going on at the moment. And then the links will go here. All the, the batteries are, which you can see, are all lined up right here, ready to be installed. I've got all laid out. And then these are all 
drawers that'll be in here. So I can take out any of these drawers. The drawers will just have a height that's about here, so above the links and above the cabling and everything else. So that can all run basically from the batteries up through the cabinet and right directly into the links there. So it keeps all the weight down low, the wiring down low, the wiring pretty much, you know, pretty close to the same elevation. So it's better than putting up on the wall where I would have had to make a, a 90 degree turn. And if I put it down here in the floor above the batteries, it would have been much harder to ever replace a battery or, or do anything like that. And also to raise the floor height, which was a key thing I was trying to avoid because I want to make sure that I've got good clear height from here to the ceiling. Seems like it's high, but it's not. Once you have the batteries in there and a couple inches for the structure of the floor, then also my ceiling height pretty much fades away. The key thing about this is that all my electrical for the most part is all on one side and all my water for the most part is all on the other side. This is still in a construction here as well and the air conditioning system as well. The air conditioning load is really the only big load, the compressor over here that will be on this side. But anyways, it'll be there. The inverter is really the big load. And then uh, I'll do some lower level DC diffusion out of these, out of the links through some smaller fuse panels right around. So smaller fuse panels like, like this one here, this blue C one. And so the shunt, which I have right here, um, the Victron shunt will go in here. And then also for each pair of batteries, I have three pairs of batteries. I am going to install a Blue C MLRBS, and this is the one for 24 volts, and that'll be for each pair. So each pair will come up in here, tie into one of these right here. That'll then feed into link, so I can shut each one off manually with this switch right here, and I can also shut them off remotely uh, via these wires to a switch. So each one will have its own switch and all three will be gained together so in an emergency or any reason why I need to disconnect batteries either by the pair or by the whole group I can just hit that switch or all three switches simultaneously right ganged up together to shut off all the battery power going to the system so uh, that provides me both a kind of a, I can have switches that are remote over here um, in, a, in a place where all the other switches will be, so in a nice safe place where I can easily get to. Should I ever need to shut down the electrical system for some emergency or even just for manual repair, whether I do that manually by the, by the switch on this right here, right just hitting that button right there will will disconnect them and disconnect each pair or i can do it from the gang of three switches up there so that allows me a, a lot of nice usefulness while doing any maintenance or anything in an emergency i like having an emergency switch for the batteries to be able to just quickly disconnect them and then all the negatives of course will come up here tied into the common shunt and then feed into the links. That hose right there, in case you're wondering, is the vent hose. So there should never be any water in that. That is purely the vent and it routes up, interconnects with the other hose vent, and then goes on up into the bathroom, the shower area, where it'll then it'll vent out above the shower pan. And of course, more about that in a future video as well. But right now, let's get back to actually installing these three remote battery switches, one for each of these three battery pairs, and the shunt on this board here that I'm installing right now, where they're only gonna be mounted on for a nice ease of insulation and also replacement should they ever be needed. The one thing that really throws a caveat in this challenge is the shunt, because I have one shunt for all three battery systems, right? That's the easiest way to do it. I could do multiple shunts, because it's way more complicated. You show you have two battery systems and how do you manage and monitor those, and really I have three battery systems, and I want them all combined together to monitor my energy use. They're all gonna be shared for all my loads, so I wanna make sure I'm just monitoring them through one shunt. So I have my one shunt, it's down here, and I'm trying to figure out like I said, the pods are easy because they're all pretty much direct lines and I can adjust those accordingly from the battery to my remote battery switch. That way I can, via switch, remote from the batteries, uh, do an emergency shutdown if I ever need to or just a shutdown without having to go and, and get to the batteries to shut them down or some other place to a battery switch where I have to shut them down. That way I can remotely do it just for a safety benefit. But the shunt, the one shunt, all the cables, I'm trying to kind of put that in the middle of all three, but of course, one of them's gonna have a longer length, one's gonna have a shorter length, and so trying to figure out what that longest length is and make them all the same, but also it's not the easiest thing to just route to because also all these positives in a way. So here's my shunt, a Victron 1000 amp, shunt right here the smart shunt nice thing about it is it happens to have three bolt connections one on this side one on this side via the same bolt and then one here in the top on the battery side and the same also on the load side so i can actually hook up each battery to 
one of these positions here and that way they're not you know stacked on top of each other's lugs which would add some additional resistance to the one that's further away from where the shunt is ever so slightly but nonetheless i really like having a, each one of these lugs going directly up against the shunt so that's what i'm intending to do so anyways i'm going to figure out that routing and get these battery cable lengths get my maximum length for the negatives get the negatives connected up and then i will go ahead and do the positives so that's exactly what i did i went ahead and measured out my cable lengths and left the lugs off one end so I could go ahead and run these. And that way before I mounted up the final lug on the other end, I made sure I got my links exactly right, trimmed those down to all be exactly the same for the negatives and also all exactly the same for the positives. So each battery pair is exactly the same charge and discharge rates between the RBSs, the shunt, and between also the RBSs and into the links distributor as well. When then check my voltages as I of course wired all these up to make sure everything looked good and all the voltages were consistent between them all. And then went ahead and mounted the RBSs up after I mounted the battery cables to the RBSs. And the same also really for the shunt. And that way I made sure they were in exactly the position that was best or optimum for that battery length. Made sure it wasn't straining that battery in any way, that battery cable in any way that they are really optimized for that exact battery length in that exact position. It doesn't really matter exactly where these position of these switches go, as long as they're really fairly close and, and accessible in the cabinetry that I'm gonna be building out around these. But really for the most part, because they have a remote battery switch that'll be elsewhere in a cabinet, I can easily access them and turn them on or off if needed in an emergency situation. And of course, also are doing some repair or maintenance that I'm doing. That was a key thing here. Make sure they all got mounted down exactly as right. And then this is what it looks like when they're all done with all them really mounted up in a nice even row and all those cables go into the shunt so that each battery cable pair from each of the three battery pairs is exactly the same length going into the shunt, exactly the same length going into its RBS, and then of course also the same length going from the shunt and or from the RBSs into the Lynx distributor. And then of course installing up my shore power connection, which I'll talk more about that in a future video, as well as of course finalizing up the connections within the shunts and the and the rbs's and the links and making those connections up and i'll share more how i also made and manufactured some lugs to the exact angles that i needed to make sure again that those cables did not have a lot of torque on them and even how i built the frame out over the batteries themselves and built the wiring for the batteries and then of course how i changed also the frame for the batteries and over those and even had to modify some marine rated battery fuses for each of the battery pairs in order to really fit and accommodate but also i came up with some nice little caps and so forth over those modified marine rated battery fuses and why of course i use those and also how i designed the wiring up and why i did it the way i did it and then also put in the disconnect for the inverters so i'll talk about that in my continuation of this sub-series of electrical installation within my DIY Expedition Camper Build. So thank you so much for watching. Look forward to sharing more with you in future videos to come. Please do subscribe and share with others.